Yo, what is up and welcome to the video. Today we're talking assessment days and I'm gonna take you through the toughest assessment center experience I had to go through. I'm gonna focus on three graduate assessment days, including one for my top choice graduate program. If you have an assessment day lined up, this video was made for you. Before we get into this, please like the video and subscribe to more graduate content. So assessment days, let's get into it. The story starts at my first ever assessment day for Coca-Cola in Uxbridge, London. I was living in Sheffield at the time, and this is my first bit of advice. I wanted to make sure my best self arrived at this assessment day, and the best self is someone who's well-fed, well-rested, who didn't have to travel far on that day. Assessment days are notoriously intense, so if I'm going to perform at my best, I'm going to be well-rested. So if you can, get a hotel that's as close to the office as possible. Nine times out of ten, a company will expense this accommodation and travel. But if not, I thought £100 was a small investment to make to maximise my chances at securing a graduate scheme. This assessment centre was really typical. It started with an icebreaker, a tour of the office, and then it had a case study, a group exercise, a presentation, and an interview. But the thing that set this assessment center apart was there was about 12 to 14 candidates, a whole host of assessors, and it was a really intense day with minimal breaks. Instead of choosing a few activities to assess us against, they chose all the activities. I thought I'd perform really solidly at Coca-Cola, but I got a call the next day saying that they wasn't gonna offer me a place on the scheme because of how I performed in their case study, which was an intra exercise. This was something that I just hadn't experienced before. And this is when I realized that assessment days are like a game. They're like an apprentice style escape room. You're put in a room and told to complete a task. The best way you can prepare for all these activities is by looking online and taking practice tests. The more you prepare, the more you practice, the more likely you're gonna see very similar activities come up. There's only so many variations on one activity that they can give. There's only so many fictitious emails they can make up. So if you practice enough, you'll really see these similar activities come up. So now we're at my second assessment day for Unilever. This was a really cool company, really cool brands, really cool office. It even had free Ben & Jerry's ice creams in the reception. So for the sake of Ben & Jerry's, I was gonna put my all into this assessment day. It started the night before where I met the three other candidates, so four including me. We stayed over and then the assessment day started the next day. This was a lot lighter than the Coca-Cola one and pretty much a bit more typical. An interview and two group exercises. Group exercises are the most difficult part of assessment centers and they're the ones that people are gonna fall down on. You have to really strike a balance between being loud enough that your opinions are heard and then you give the assessors enough content to mark you against, but then being quiet enough that you don't dominate the room and just try and overpower and become overbearing on the others. There really is a fine balance to strike. I would say the best things I can recommend are remember everyone's name, take leadership, take control of the group, but also collaborate with other people. And a few of the quieter members always try and bring them into the conversation. For our group exercise, we were led into a room, all four of us, Assessors are in each corner. The one opposite you is the one assessing you most likely and all of them are gonna be silent because they're waiting for you to start the activity. This is what I did to start and I would recommend doing something very, very similar. Before we get into the activity, there's two things we should be mindful of. One is the time because it'd be really easy to get off track. So would someone like to just give us a heads up at regular intervals? And two, we should write our objectives down on the board so that actually we can see if we've achieved what we set out to do. Grab that pen once you've figured out the time, write the objectives down and make sure to get feedback from the rest of the group. You have instantly, in about two minutes, shown leadership, shown time management, shown good project management, and by getting suggestions from the other people, shown that you can also collaborate and work well with others. The reason I say there's two things to be mindful of is purely just so I don't get cut off after my first time management piece. So then I can grab the pen and go to the board. But I got the call from Unilever the next day and again, they didn't offer me a place on the scheme. But this time I performed really, really well except for one element they couldn't tick off their mark scheme and that was my analytical side. I'd done so well in the first five minutes leading the group 
But what they wanted me to do was sit down and really get into the detail and go through the figures of the projects and show my more analytical side. So just by a margin, I'd missed out on getting an offer. For future group exercises, I realized what I needed to say. Once we've just about finished our objectives, you need to face the candidates and ask if there's anything else that needs writing on the board. If no, sit back down. But if yes, then most likely someone's gonna wanna give a suggestion. Say, that's a great suggestion, would you like to write it down? That candidate's gonna light up, shoot to the whiteboard, and you can trade places. That's gonna show you can further build a team, as well as allowing you to sit back down and get into the details of the task. If you do all the things I've just said, I promise you, you will be the top performing candidate within the first five minutes, hands down. So for me, this was my darkest hour. I'd been applying consistently for graduate schemes for six months and I still had no offer. I'd learned an absolute ton applying for Coca-Cola, Unilever, but really ultimately I didn't have an offer and time was running out because my assessment day for my top choice was just around the corner and I couldn't afford not to get an offer for this scheme. So jump to my final group exercise in my top choice graduate program in that assessment day. And this, and little did I know, was the toughest assessment day experience I'd ever had. There was three of us in this final stage, all of which had a great chance of actually getting an offer. So all three of us sit down and we start the task, and I do it in the usual way. Before we get into it, we should be mindful of the time, as well as write our objectives down on the board so we can refer back to later. Do you think that sounds like a good idea? And the other candidate, the other guy, and this is when I knew I had a fight on my hands, said, no, I don't think that's a good suggestion. With no other suggestions, no other commentary, just silence. And that's when I knew this was a fight to get this offer. So I proceeded to say this, I won't waste any time writing objectives down on the board. I'll do it really quick and I promise you it will save us a lot of time in the long run. I proceeded to grab the pen, went to the board and wrote some objectives down. Unfortunately, the other candidate, the other girl and him started giving suggestions and I sat back down. Fortunately, in this instant, when this guy was trying to argue, I was able to dodge his initial blow and give him a good jab to the body. But this was not gonna come easy. So the task was deciding which project to invest in and throughout the activities, they'd give these news flashes which were new bits of information that might affect our decision. All three of us had a different project that we were pitching. This discussion, this debate, and we had to decide which one to go for is all part of the task. But 15 minutes in, I realized Mr. Argumentative was not going to concede on any point, And there was no chance that he wasn't gonna get his project through. So after 15 minutes, this is what I said. I believe that my proposal is the best one, but your proposal also has merit. So I'm happy for the sake of proceeding with a task to go with your suggestion. I reached out to the girl beside me, asked for her acceptance, and then we went for his proposal. And I knew to win the war, I had to lose this battle. But this is when I realized I could give him an absolutely knockout blow. So what I said was this, we're gonna go with your proposal for the top choice, but every single proposal has risks. And the important thing that we can do is build an action plan to implement this project, also to mitigate all the risks so they don't turn into issues. And then we proceeded to go through every single little bit that was wrong with this proposal and actually give suggestions on how to mitigate against it and an action plan all off the back of my suggestion. This wasn't a knockout blow because I was able to tear his idea down. This was a knockout blow for Mr. Argumentative because I was able to take his proposal and make it so much bigger and better by putting an action plan and identifying risks and putting mitigating actions. So that was the knockout blow for Mr. Argumentative. I was able to collaborate with someone build on their idea, even though they was using every opportunity to argue with us too. And this last group exercise was the final group exercise and the final assessment day I attended, because I got a phone call the next day offering me a place on that graduate scheme. And the best thing is, not only did Mr. Argumentative not get a place, the other girl who we were working so well together with got an offer on that scheme. And four years later, I still work with that girl today. This experience taught me so much about assessment centers. Firstly, there's more than one space on a scheme for the right candidates. Secondly, it is a so much more about how you collaborate with others, 
less about dominating each specific decision. If you're both good and you're building each other up, the likelihood is you both will receive an offer. If not, it will show that you're still able to work with other people, particularly when you can bring in some of the more quieter people. And it's less focused on these technical aspects and more about your personality, how you engage with others, how you present, how you can collaborate with others, your team working. It's gonna be a lot less about the technical aspects which they can teach. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment below any assessment day questions you have and subscribe to the channel for more grad recruitment content. Boom.